Hi guys, welcome back. Oh, getting a bit of a hot weather here, yes, that's nice. Um, so I thought I'd come on and um, show you, I've been doing my big drawing, um, but I wanted to show you how you can create that smooth look with drawing with pen and ink, well, with fine liners. It's, it's easy to think to yourself, you can do it really easily with a pencil because if you're a smudger or um, somebody who uses the... Uh, um, you know the stubbing pencil uh you know you know what i mean the the stubs that you can just rub in or people who like to use the grease from their fingers i i like to use the grease from my fingers a lot of drawers wouldn't agree with that not oh no don't get that on the paper but you know me i do what i want to do and that's why i enjoy doing my art um because i don't follow rules i just get I guess get some principles coming in and then I can work from that. Um, can you see my box at the back of there? Look, that's all just full of uh, art stuff and papers and stuff like that. Typical studio. Um, but um, I've been, I was been working on this drawing and I, you can see what I've been doing later on um, in the video. But I wanted to just show you some techniques with, um, obviously, they call it pending, but these are fine liners. So, um, about like getting that smooth look that you want. All right, so uh, I'll just turn the camera down. Okay, so I've just put a um, sketchbook on top of the drawing. I'm uh, in the middle of doing, putting a new building in the back here. So I'm wanting, I'm wanting plenty, um, I'm wanting plenty of, it's a large area to cover. So I'm wanting plenty of grain work and, and you know and being able to fill it all in so um i thought that i'd show you so so if i wanted um to start off so say if i was do, doing i don't know just trying to uh cover this area here like this if i was trying to cover this area here i would start off with a thicker pen so this one is an 05. Oh, hello. <laughs> I've got a visitor come up. So this one's an 05. So if I'm coming down here, if I'm coming down as a, I'm coming up to the line here. So straight away, um, if you want to use um, a technique, you can use the side of say a book. If you don't want to go any further or a ruler and, um, and come up to it with your pen. Uh, you can do it like that, but you, if you do that, you're always, it's always going to get like a slight bend at the top and um, You know, it's going to get like a hook on it at the top Don't forget when we're doing these drawings because they are large drawings What we're wanting to get it, we're wanting to get an even look Now if you're getting a look that looks a bit like this if you can see this close up here it's got like bits in it and um it's because the pen's getting old now and getting ready to be changed so um but i prefer to take my time and come right up to the line and try not to leave any gaps it doesn't matter if you do but i'm trying my best not to and coming down if I'm coming like say down the edge of a building like this and like this, I did explain a little bit in the video. Um, you need to kind of like come down some short bits and some long bits. So you kind of want to get the feeling of like holding your pen nice and light and like you're coming down like this. And some ones, some will be shorter, and then you want some that's going to come right down, a bit like icicles, I guess. Because if water was running down a building, if when you wanted to get this old look, if the water was running down a building to give it this damp look, what would happen is it wouldn't run down equally. You know, it's not all going to run down straight like that. It's going to run down at diff at different lengths. You know, you've only got to do that with watercolour, um, even when you wet glisten the page, it's always going to come down at different length. And that's what we want. Don't be frightened to turn your book. Obviously, with a big drawing like this, it's not so easy. 
and then I do want to go along that edge because I do want to get that edge yeah but a nice way now is to just smudge that with my finger <laughs> I've got my uh, German Shepherd puppy come upstairs to me to the okay so this was done so let me just get to the end and then I can show you the effect um while I'm talking um the effect that you get it's um oh she's sniffing me there <laughs> um it makes it like it makes it that it's makes it all uneven and it make and that's good you want it uneven we don't we don't want it level we don't want it level so so this was um these are micron graphics that i use they're, they're quite cheap i think they're only about 11 pound on amazon um and this one's an 05 so obviously if it's only got like one uh, you know a zero in front of it it's going to be a, a fatter a fatter pen so this time now I want to use a 005 and this one make this one means it's a really fine one good tip people just think oh I'll take the lid off and I'll just put it down don't ever do that put it straight on the top of your pen because if you do put it down the chances are you're going to lose it and it's just going to make things worse so now if I come in with the fine one on top I can come in between these gaps and I'm getting a more smooth look and it gives it that feel that like it's all one rather than all these little gaps S still same again i'm not putting much pressure on and i am just get, doing it nice and light with the um different lengths because now this is a finer pen you don't want it to come There's, i don't want to be coming down that same line there because it's already there but I might want to come down a bit at the side of it, a bit shorter, which gives it is contrast from that long line. And it gives it a little bit of a shorter line at the side of it. So now concentrating on filling in these gaps, which is going to give it that lovely smoother look some long look and like almost like icicles in fact you could use them as icicles i guess and um, if you was um if you was doing a winter scene um so yeah so you can see the difference with just the fatter pen on its own and going up just with the line and then coming down this part so now i'm going to go across again and i'm even going to go i'm only going to get the gaps now to get that even finer look i don't want to go any finer with my pen I, this is fine enough excuse me if i go a bit quiet i'm just concentrating <laughs> so again going across the, the top of that so if you imagine that's the underneath the roof there obviously that bit's going to be darker and then what i do is to Lick my finger just very slightly and then just pull it across and then pull it down while it's just slightly damp and slightly oily and just pull pull the smudge down if you go back in again while it's slightly damp it's even nicer you know in these gaps And there we are. So it's giving you a lovely smooth look. Can you see the difference there? Yeah, it gives that lovely smooth um, kind of a look of like that it's all one. Yeah. So obviously we all know about cross hatching. So if I wanted to do that with cross hatching. Just showing you with the fine one. It would still give a nice effect if I went across that, but I find that with cross hatching, it it very do it very it it gives it very an even look, and when it's like this, I don't want an even look. I'll show you. It's it's more for blocking in an area. 
And if I wanted to do it um, the, the opposite way now. And again, pull it down. So can you see how the cross hatching, what that's done? It's, it's giving it more of a block, but it's not quite as smooth as what that is there. You know, that's, you can see that that is coming down. That's more of a block area. It's more of a block. So um, depending on, on what, you, what you're after. Also, I've shown you this technique before. I've got a tool here. This is a sculpting tool. And um, if you do some scratches, just doing like what I'm doing here, you can get these on Amazon as well. These are just like, um, or oh, they're really cheap. They're about six ninety nine for a pack, and and they, what they are, they're for clay sculpting. If you look that up on uh, online, you'll be able to you'll be able to see that. I used to do this technique when I'm doing um, when I was doing uh, dog portraits. It's ideal for fur. It's ideal for feathers. And I'm going to go in now back in with the O5, putting my lid back on the O5, if I can see where I've done it. So I'm just rubbing it over the top now. And where I've done that grain, you can see where I've done that scratching in, it's giving it like a grain. This is a fantastic technique for doing trees. You can get a really nice, um, even, you know, if you keep if you keep your, the weight distributed across your pen in the same you know don't don't do this smooth there and you know or go in like this and then try and straighten it up because all you're going to see is those lines that's gone there so keeping it as level as you possibly can we want it all to be even and I literally am colouring over the top and bringing out that lovely grain that I've just created and you can see it close up filling in my gaps but keeping the pen moving don't hold it in one place keep it moving up and down up and down same pressure and you can see gives it a lovely grain again in and pull and then that gives you another look. Can you see that? There. Yeah. So that's uh, there's, so. There's just a few techniques there. You can use this one that you're pulling down. You can actually go up with it too. But I find that when I'm going up with it, look at bananas. So it bananas round like this. I don't seem to have the natural. Uh, ability in my hand really without practicing like this to keep those perfectly straight saying that i've managed to do that so if i wanted to go in with heavily with some cross hatching now i could do Again, keeping it straight and keeping it level. You know, the same pressure when I mean straight and level, that's what that's what I mean. So, um, and then for the trees, for the background that's on the trees, we're doing lots and lots of squiggles, but we're not just going squiggle, 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 squiggle. We're not doing that. We're doing a little C's and S's and things like that and moving them keeping the pen moving it's quite nice if you swap hands and use your non-dominant hand because um it makes them more you know random marks sorry i can't sh you can't see what i'm doing at the moment because i'm showing you with my my wrong hand but so you're getting like random gaps but then obviously you want more contrast so you can either fill in the contrast by doing the gaps like this giving it more contrast towards say the center of a, it might be the center of a branch like this uh, as you're coming down towards say a tree branch coming off or you might you might want to just keep those on the end here but as you're coming out towards the ends spread them out 
make them more tiny because it gives the illusion that they're further away. But if you're coming in closer to the branch, uh, thicken up the branch a little bit and just add a bit of contrast in there. Don't be afraid. You can't go wrong on something like this. This is why I enjoy doing this sort of thing because you can't really go wrong. You can't even go wrong on your buildings. The only thing that you can go wrong with is getting your angle wrong. But I I always use like a set square like, you know, the root, the, the, it's over the other side of the studio. I can't get it at the minute. Um, you know, the triangle like rulers, like a set square. And then you, you know full well you're going to get it correct here and here and then here it's going to be even because there's no point in doing an angle that's like that if it's going to be like that so if you use a set square to start with you're going to get it correct so anyway so there's a few techniques for you um i hope you found that interesting have a go um also just one other thing is as well is um you can wet a brush um I usually just lick it because if I put it in water, I never can get the consistency right. And this really isn't watercolour paper, it's a mixed media paper. I don't really fancy putting on it um, a lot of water. So I just lick it a little bit and then, and, and then I can pull this down even more. Just lick one side of the brush and then the other. And then pull it down even more and then you've got, you've got then even more contrast like this and it's filled in any gaps that's left there rub it straight away so it comes off and then then you've got like you've got your dark against light and then you've got your mid-tone that's there look and then your light so you can see like the contrast the dark against light dark against light and you've got a mid-tone here so you can start to smooth things out so it's it's not just about drawing, it's thinking about what you're actually doing as you're going along. Today, I've managed to put in a, a fluffy bird in here. Um, I don't know I can show you. It's just there, look, a little, um, a little fledgling on a swing that I've brought down at the back of the secret garden here. And then, obviously, you saw me the other day, I put some balloons in. And then I've just been doing this big building here. And um, so the, the video at the end, it shows you how I've been um, starting on that. So you can see like the technique I was showing you is starting to come down. I've got it down here and on the balloons and things like that. And you can see, I mean, I've got to pull this down a lot more, but the tone is going to be lighter here and this is going to be darker. And this is going to be like a mid-tone. I wanted it to be really dark there so you could see that this is building is going back. So it's not easy because then this is going to be on more of a hill. But instead of just building up the, the picture going straight up, and being boring and it's developed more space because you're using different angles and because I'm not thinking about the angles too much only the angle of the building and I'm placing it on here I'm not overly planning it so I'm not making it boring if you understand that so I'm not making it overly boring in the way that like all the buildings are facing at the front I've got some at so it looks almost then like a village or a little town and, and that's what I'm after and um, you know, I like to think about things that uh, you it's, it's amazing what comes it's like this window that's come on here if I can turn the camera down to show you this little window that's come on here um there was a uh, window like this um in an attic room that I used to have to sleep in as a young girl and it used to frighten me and I didn't like it <laughs> and I didn't even realize and I've and I've drawn it without even realizing that that it seems to be still in my mind when you think how oh, I'm an older lady now and that was from a childhood memory it's strange how things just come out you know and um yeah and believe it or not this red door on this windmill i've actually seen this 
uh, it was just a random red door and although I like to use the power of red like I have done on this building here uh, with this um, man on the ladder the red door wasn't it wasn't kind of put there how can I say it wasn't put there on purpose I literally saw a, red, a windmill with a red door <laughs> so uh, that's why that's there so anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learnt something. Um, don't be frightened to just use your pen and ink. If you are really worried, instead of going in with the dark, um, go in with, a, use a grey pen. You can get them. Um, so this is a grey pen. This is a different make. This is, it's a waterproof one. And this is a, a uni uni pin i think fine line so this is a gray so if you're worried you can use the gray and obviously as you as you're working your way into the back of the picture with pen and ink you can use gray and it will look like it's it's further away because the gray is going into the distance rather than the black just hitting you all the time so it gives your eye a break as you're really trying to work out what's actually in the drawing so um i don't really know what i'm going to come up with next and um, i'm just enjoying doing it and i just thought i'd share this journey with you because uh, i know a lot of you like to see the drawing so uh have a go if you if you even if you start on something the size of let me just get it the size of a button draw around a big button put it on your paper draw around it and practice some of the techniques do fill a sketchbook you know until until you can get things correct you can also use this by drawing around halves of buttons and keep moving the button you've seen me do that technique before as well ideal for getting around the edges of things and getting it correct you know the the correct um feeling and shape you know and, and getting it very very even i often use it actually on flowers so uh, on the petals um if i want to put lines in them um and i just use a button and just keep moving it down as i'm moving it or moving it up if i'm going the other way so uh yeah always handy to have a big button and um yeah you can you can do it with a coin trouble is with coins they can have the grains around the edge can't they but a big big old button get one from your grandma or from your mum or, or if you've got them yourself you just go and get one oh, can i have a big button they're like you'll you'll go to if you go to see them you'll find they've got jars and jars of them so just help yourself um, nice to have a set of all different uh, sizes but um yeah you, you can't go wrong so uh have a look at your pens and and things like that and and just have a go i think the nice thing about doing a big drawing like this is the fact that when i'm finished and i'm when i'm when i finish work i feel a little bit tense same as anybody else does so you come home and you think oh gosh i'm so tired but to sit down and do this i find it very very relaxing but the work is very very tight and i do have to think about where i'm going to put things and how i'm going to develop it so today i've been developing that large building so i've had to really think about the angles and things but now i've drawn it out the easy part and the comforting part comes and i can just put all my notches in and make holes and all sorts of things that i think that i can see on buildings even i can see from my attic window here i can see um you know from the studio i can see um chimney pots have got holes in and chipped chipped off bricks and things like that i could put a chimney pot wherever i want i could just put one on randomly on the top of a hill if i wanted but what i'm saying is you'd look for those things photograph them bring it back and think yes i can put that in my work i've shown you so many times to photograph 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 all the time so just do it okay um so enjoy yourselves uh, but when if you're going to go straight for a big drawing just keep the drawings small like you would do you see if you do an abstract art you have to you have to upsize everything you have to upsize your tools you have to upsize you know your paper your tools and everything 
if you're doing a very very detailed drawing like this you've only got to pick certain buildings or trees or whatever it is to upsize the rest if you're doing it very very detailed you can do it all small and all the same size the whole lot the same size if you want to it look a bit boring but um but you know you can see let me show you you see that this is a this is a quite a big building in comparison to these you know and you would think oh well actually a big building wouldn't that be at the front not necessarily not always not always you, when you think about it because um it depends on if this is a going to be a barn or a church i'm not sure yet a big church this could be like a little church hall then you see at the side of it um but if it was um a big church an old-fashioned church it would be bigger than the church hall so it then has made that look like it's in front so you have to use your head a bit and, and think about it you know you don't necessarily have to do the biggest parts at the front um and it's the same with the trees you know and everything and then suddenly oh look i put in a random door down here i can't show you because i can't turn it round. but i put a random door in there well is a random door ideal um it was a little bit large up for the wall who cares it's my drawing and i want to put in it what i want and it doesn't really matter at the end of it i want people i want to have filled it all in and i want people to be able to look at it like those pictures and think oh gosh there's a robin there on that tree or oh look there's a little cat there sat on that wheel or oh look um there's some sheep there that's hidden that's coming down the side of the building but when you look closely you can see that the sheep but at the at a distance you probably wouldn't see that so you've got to be able to have your picture to look dominant at a distance you want your contrast areas some dark areas to stand out to draw you to the picture from the back of the room but then you want people to think oh wow just look at that and, and walk forward and close up to it and have a really good look and stand and look and see what's actually in your picture and that's what i want them to to see i want them to see that and um, I might not sell this one. I probably wouldn't be able to sell it. But when this one's done, I'm going to pay and have this one framed. And I'm going to have this one up in my art studio for me. Unless somebody offers me a lot of money for it because it's taken me a lot of time. But remember what I keep telling you. If you do a large drawing, do a bit at a time. That's why it's taking me so long. Because if you just concentrate on one area for an evening or a couple of hours or half an hour 15 minutes or five hours it doesn't matter you then can come away from that think to yourself do you know what for a couple of days i don't want to do that it's i i, I can't i can't think of what i want to else to put in there and suddenly it just come to you so go off and do something else and that's why i've been doing my watercolor so do something else and then come back to it and keep enjoying it if you try and just sit down this is why I wouldn't really want to be a, um, you know, a, a, an illustrator for people because you've got a time limit. They'll say, I want you to do this for me uh, and you've got six weeks to do it and I want six drawings, A4 size, blah, blah, blah. Well, can you imagine the pressure of that? A lot of, a lot of you might do that already for a living and, um, you know, you've randomly came, come over to my channel. But just think it, it's a bit like doing when you're doing... Uh, my little uh, girl, she's back again. Jasmine, come here, look. Come here, look. Here she comes, look. Hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you're doing, if you're doing that, it's a bit like doing portraits for people, dog portraits and things like that. Because there's a time limit on the wanting it doing, you're suddenly under pressure. I don't want any of that. Um, if somebody buys something that I've done and I've enjoyed doing it, then that's, that's what I want. So anyway, so have a look at the video now and um, I've put bits and bobs on and, and just enjoy it and uh yeah i'll talk to you all soon okay bye